Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting, flawless tutorial. Well, probably not either of those two things, but uh, we should have a lot of fun and uh, man, I love that song. Anyway, uh, today we're going to be creating a cool energy soul sucking uh, effect. So uh, let's take a quick look. It can be a few different things. It can be uh, a soul-sucking experience. Um, you can also use it as sort of a, a Harry Potter effect where the Decepticons, they sort of suck the souls out of people. Kind of a weird, kind of demented kind of character, but uh, definitely uh, someone to look into. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I have our soul movie. We'll drop it into a new comp. And we have Tino here. And uh, let's go and create a new solid. And... Uh, it's going to be our energy. And we'll go and make it white. Okay, and okay. Now, I'm probably going to make this a little bit longer, but let's go and pre-compose it. Pre-compose. Move all attributes and uh, choose okay. Then alt double click on that. And we're going to go ahead and add simulation CC particle world. And we'll go ahead and set the grid to off. And we'll go down to the physics settings. We'll set it to direction axis. And we'll turn the velocity down to 0.6 or so. And the gravity down to zero. Now, we want the particles to be flying from left to right. So let's go to the producer. And let's move the producer over. So we'll just move it over on the x axis. And uh, we'll also go down into the particle and set it to lens convex. And we'll go to the options, rendering, and we'll turn on motion blur. OK, OK. And uh, let's lower the birth rate. And uh, this is kind of the part where we just have to play around until we get it to look right. So we'll turn the longevity up so the particles last long enough to go from one end to the other end of the screen. Okay, looks good. Now we also want to vary the velocity of the particle. And the reason we want to do that is so that it looks like a little bit more an uneven flow or an uneven stream of particles. So we'll alt click on the velocity and add a wiggle expression, wiggle. And we'll type eight comma 0.25. And that way eight times a second, the number will vary about 0.25. And that way, you can see some particles are slow and some are a little bit faster. And so it's a bit of an uneven stream. Now, I'm going to go into the comp settings and we'll set the duration to 300 frames. So it's a little longer. And uh, we'll zoom out here and we'll extend the layer. Now, to give it a more energy look, we're going to choose Effect Blur CC Vector Blur. And also, we're going to add a Fast Blur. So we'll turn the Fast Blur repeat edges on and we'll just increase it a bit. Now I'm going to put the Fast Blur above the Vector Blur and then we're going to turn the Vector Blur amount up. So you can see it kind of gives it more of an energy look. And in order to fill it in to make it more dense, we're going to turn up the size of the particles. Okay, now to complete this we're going to duplicate it. So Edit, Duplicate. And we're going to go into the particle producer settings for the top layer. So we'll call it energy 1. And we'll go in here. And we're going to increase the radius on the y-axis so that it gets a little bit taller. And we probably want to give it a little more blur so that we have sort of a sharp inside and a soft outside. Now, on our original energy layer, we probably want to bring the y radius down. And that way, it kind of creates a vein that goes through. That looks pretty good. And I'll also go ahead and duplicate the layer one more time. Control D. And we'll shut off the fast blur and the vector blur. We're just going to use the particles. Now we do want to play with the size of the particles. And we're going to go ahead and make them a lot smaller. And we're also going to lower the velocity and the birth rate. And we'll turn up the longevity. And we'll also offset the layer 
so that the particles are born sooner. And uh, I'll go ahead and increase the longevity again. And you can turn the motion blur off also if you want to make it a little more subtle. Okay, that looks pretty good, but our small particles uh, are going a little quick. So we'll slow it down even more by turning the velocity down. And we'll increase the longevity again so that they fill the screen across. Okay, now that we have the energy stream done, we're going to go ahead and add a black solid to the background. And we also want to add a little bit of distortion. And the way we're going to do that is add a new adjustment layer. And we're going to choose Effect, Distort, Mesh Warp. Now, this is a very cool plugin. We're going to go ahead and set the rows to 4x4. Four four. So what we're going to do is go ahead and distort this image by moving these points around. So we click here in the middle, and we can you know, just start distorting our particle system. And, you know, we can adjust the handles and uh, all that good stuff. We'll go ahead and just shut a few of those off so we can work a little bit quicker. And half res for now. And the idea is just to kind of get like a wavy stream. And we can straighten this out as well as this point. And so now the particles kind of flow like in a river. And it's going to be kind of helpful for giving it a more organic, natural look. And so if we go to the beginning here, we can fade in our small particles. And just do a quick keyframe where they fade up. And it uh, looks good. So now we'll go back into our raw footage. And now we have our particle stream on top. We'll set the transfer mode to screen. And we'll choose effect color correction curves and uh, make some space here and we'll go ahead and colorize it so with the red channel we'll go ahead and lower it and we'll go to the blue channel and we'll bring this up that looks pretty good um, let's go ahead and uh, motion track our footage so we'll create a new null object and uh, we'll go ahead and double click on the footage and choose tracker controls and we'll track motion. We'll zoom in here. We'll take the track point and we'll put it on his nose. So maybe right about there. And then we'll track forward. And we'll choose edit target. Make sure our null is selected. OK and apply. Okay, now the simple solution to tracking this on here is just to line it up so we can rotate it and you know line it up and then parent it to the null. And that way it'll look like it's you know sort of coming out of his mouth there. Now if uh, you're offended by souls being sucked, um, no worries, just rotate the layer and play it backwards and basically somebody is giving him his soul back. So you can play it both ways uh, depending on uh, you know how you feel about this subject. Um, what we're gonna do, we'll go ahead and just do the soul sucking. Okay, so it looks like his soul is being sucked out and that's good and we can zoom in here, take the pen tool, select the energy comp and just draw a mask around the outside of his mouth so that it looks like and so it looks like it's coming out of his mouth only. And we can feather it. And we can also keyframe the mask path. So if you bring that down, we can kind of scrub through and just make a couple of keyframes. Through the clip. So that's sort of the simple solution. And then we can duplicate the energy and maybe we'll squeeze it down and we'll rotate it and make it look like it's coming out of one of his eyes and then duplicate it again, control D by the way, and make it look like it's coming out of his other eye. Um, also if we offset the time it'll look like there is more of a random point in time that the energy is coming out so that it doesn't look like uh, the same clip. 
it's kind of like when you wear the same clothes in a single week. You know, you don't want to wear the exact same thing back to back, but switch it up, you know, like change the shirt and use different jeans, um, you know, and that way you can have two outfits last you a whole week. Uh, trust me, I've done it. Actually, I'm going on three weeks right now, and nobody seems to notice, or at least nobody's said anything. Um, okay, let's go and bring the saturation down on the energy. So we'll choose tint, and we'll just set it to 50, and we'll copy that and paste it to the others. And so that gives us uh, that look. Now, we also want to add a little bit of a face kind of distorting. So we'll duplicate the soul movie. And then we're going to go choose effect, distort, and we're going to use the liquify filter. Now we've used this before in the demon face tutorial and we're going to do something somewhat similar. So what you can do is make a very small brush and turn up the pressure and just start you know, smearing the face in the direction of the energy. And, you know, the idea of using a small brush is so that you can have, um, you know, finer detail um, and it'll just, uh, it'll just look a little bit cooler. So that's kind of giving us the distortion that we want. However, the problem that comes up is say we need to color correct the background or do other effects to just the background. We need to create a mat just around the outside of the distortion area. Now I found a very cool way to do that and we choose effect keying difference mat. Now the difference mat is a way to create a mat based on you know the difference between one layer and another layer. So y the idea was you know you shoot a scene and then you have your character in the scene and then you shoot the scene without your character and you could compare them and hopefully make a mat around your main character but usually it didn't work very well and the reason why is because you know just the slight difference in exposure and grain caused it not to link up but in this case we're using the exact same clip so if we choose that movie it's going to actually perfectly if we turn the tolerance all the way down to zero it's going to perfectly remove everything but the distorted area now that we've done that we can turn the opacity on and off to kind of create you know that mix between the two layers but we do need to link the distortion to our tracking data and what we can do is use the distortion mesh offset now in the demon face tutorial we learned a more advanced way to link them together and you may need to do that depending on your shot here we're just going to link the distortion mesh so what we'll do is click on the null hit P bring up the position hit E go to the liquify um, and we'll go, we'll just alt click on the distortion mesh offset and we'll parent this up to the position. Now we need to do one other thing and that is subtract the current position. So that's the expression it creates automatically. Then just click minus and do two square brackets and type 425 comma 302 in bracket. So that's going to remove this offset so that our distortion somewhat lines up for the clip. Now without that expression uh, the distortion is all over the place so just make sure turn that on and uh, should look pretty good. Now we also want to add a wiggle expression to the distortion percentage so that we can kind of animate it phasing as if the energy is, you know, pulsating. So we'll alt click on the distortion percentage. We'll type wiggle five comma 75 and we'll set the distortion percentage to 50 and that way it will uh, kind of turn on and off. Now we may want to turn this down to maybe four and turn this up to 105. Let's see, we'll turn the distortion up to 75. I just want to see more distortion than not. So that looks pretty good. Now, the other thing we're going to do is link the opacity. So we'll hit T, we'll hit U first. Then we'll hold down Shift, hit T, bring up the opacity, Alt click on the opacity, and link this to the distortion percentage. And what that does, is when it's 100% distorted, it's 100% opaque. And then when it comes down, 
it fades out. And so that way it can kind of blend between the two in kind of a nice, cool, natural way. But it's purposely superimposed so it looks transparent in a way. So pretty simple way just to link those together. And uh, we'll go ahead and close that out. So very simple expressions, uh, but it does make it look pretty cool. So we'll go and turn our energy back on and you can scroll down and kind of check it out. Okay, and finally we can add a little bit of, you know, light effect. So let's just add an adjustment layer and we'll choose effect color correction curves and uh, turn that up a bit. Maybe give it some color and a slight glow even. Turn the intensity down a bit. And then we'll hit T and we'll keyframe the opacity. So we'll set the opacity to zero and then Alt click on the stopwatch. We'll type wiggle, I don't know, eight comma 100. And we can take a look at that. So it's kind of kind of switch on and off. We can probably make that 10. And that way it kind of flickers on and off. We can also probably add some camera shake, um, like in the energy tutorial to give it a more powerful feeling, some sound effects. Now the distortion is distorting the back part of the actual image, and you can fix that with maybe a mask. Um, or just say uh, the energy is so powerful that it's uh, refracting the light and so it's bending the background. And you know, the producer says, oh, that makes sense, good job. And then you say, whew, good thing I didn't have to do that because that would have been a big pain and I wouldn't have done it. Or I would have, but I would have cried. Okay, so hopefully you'll end up with something like this. And I think what's really cool about it is that when he morphs here towards the end, he almost starts to look like Richard Nixon, which um, I don't know if you guys know who that is that they teach him in school. But anyway, uh, I just thought that was kind of interesting. He's just kind of battling uh, this body. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Andrew Kramer, and of course, be sure to check out the site. We've got some great uh, products, Riot Gear. Might have some great elements to add to the organic look of this energy and if you're new to After Effects be sure to check out the After Effects basic training and uh, you might find it useful to start down here at the bottom of the tutorials and uh, work your way up since a lot of the techniques and expressions are introduced along the way. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Assuming I don't run into Sub-Zero and some of his friends and then I have to battle them out.